start. Hello, video version of the show. You are now listening. And you if you're just joining us on the video version, you haven't missed much. You have missed me uh, giving the intro to the Oregon standoff, okay? That's it. The chat says, excited about bass ball. My dad said those guys crazy. Oh my God. Baseball guys in the chat. Are you kidding me right now? Or bass ball, I guess. Bass ball guys in the chat. Um, okay. My dad said those guys are crazy. Yeah, the guys in Oregon. Well, let's find out, bass ball boy. <laughs> Oh my goodness, basketball guy. He hasn't been around for a while. I can't believe he's doing a morning show. Okay. Um, let's see. Eamon Bundy and several members of the militant group unexpectedly attended a community meeting in Burns, Oregon. Many attendees spoke of their desire to see the militants leave, and Judge Stephen Gasty directed, directly addressed Bundy with the statement, it is time for you to go home, provoking cheers from the crowd. So he went... He he left the compound or whatever they're calling it, and uh, he went down to like <coughs> a city council meeting or something and said hi, and everyone said go away. And, uh, they were all very happy. Okay, let's jump ahead. <coughs> we are doing the uh, traffic stop now. So the police admit, uh, clarified the traffic stop was set up deliberately as an in an effort to arrest militants. Amon and Ryan Bundy, along with three other militants, were stopped while on their way to another community meeting. <laughs> so he's going to another meeting, even after he got booed and cheered out of the last one. Where Amon Bundy was scheduled to be a guest speaker. Oh, okay. Witnesses report that one car, I wonder if it was a... I wonder if it was a sting. You know, like, you know what? We really, really want you to come be a guest speaker. We promise we like you. <laughs> and he's like, okay. Okay. Witnesses report that one car stopped, but another drove away, being subsequently pursued by officers and eventually getting stuck in a snowbank. <laughs> a shootout between the militants and state troopers ensued, leaving one militant, Vinicum, dead, and Ryan Bundy injured. Both of the Bundy brothers and three other militants were detained after the shootout ended. They will face federal felony charges of conspiracy to impede federal officers from discharging their official duties through the use of force, imitation, intimidation, or threats. <gasps> Whew. Reports say that the group were pulled over and everyone present obeyed orders to surrender except for Finnicum and Ryan Bundy with shots being fired. Unnamed law enforcement officers stated that Finnicum and Ryan Bundy had fled from the site where the party was initially pulled over, encountered a roadblock about a mile later, and that Finnicum had been shot while reaching for a gun in his waistband. Some of the militants and supporters claimed that Finnicum was cooperating with the police when he was shot. This included a claim by Nevada Assemblywoman Michelle Flore that said he was just murdered with his hands up. Now, how does a Nevada Assemblywoman know anything? Was she a witness, or is she just uh, pandering to the militant crowd? Cliven Bundy was quoted as saying that Finnicum was sacrificed for a good purpose. Uh, the assemblywoman was not present at the arrest, but said she had spoken to Amon Bundy's wife, who he had called after the arrest. Okay, so she's uh, she's just reiterating another account. <sighs> other accounts from eyewitnesses at the scene indicate that Finnicum may have charged the officers. Three other militants were arrested in separate actions. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Two other guys were arrested locally, while John Eric Ritzhalmer was arrested by the FBI in Arizona after turning himself in. Okay. Why is he in Arizona? He's like, I'm one of the militants from Oregon. Please arrest me. <laughs> Following the arrest, the occupation continued. Okay, so the guys are still up there. They're just without uh, their leader because he was arrested. Early on Wednesday morning, uh, occupier Jason Patrick said that women and children had left the occupation, but added that five to six people met and then decided to continue the occupation. Hours later, federal and state police forces moved into the region, formed a perimeter around the refuge, and blocked access to it by setting up roadblocks. Only ranchers who owned land near the area were, out, were allowed to pass. The remaining members debated on what to do next, with some angry about the recent events. Through his lawyer, Amon Bundy urged those... Remember, he's in jail. He got arrested. Eamon Bundy urged those remaining at the refuge to stand down and go home. Two hours later, a convoy of vehicles was seen leaving the refuge. Three more militants, including Patrick, handed themselves in at the perimeter while others were allowed to leave. It is unclear 
how many remain. Okay, so this is a live, uh, this is a thing <laughs> that's happening right now. At the scene, as you still have a number of occupiers who are still at that refuge, and it's unclear how or when this is going to end. As you just said, Ammon Bundy, the leader, is telling them to go home, but who knows if they will heed that call. In terms of what happened last night, authorities clearly had been planning for this. You had a number of occupiers who were going to a community meeting, and uh, officials seized upon the moment. They affected a traffic arrest. And it looked like it was going to be peaceful, but you had two people who put up a fight and uh, there was gunfire. Uh, you had one person who was killed, a 54-year-old Arizona rancher uh, named Lavoy Finicum, who had previously said that he was willing to die uh, for this cause. Uh, authorities, if they were hoping that this was going to end, uh, clearly they are wrong because you still have a number of people who are still dug in at the refuge. Anderson? And, and so Ammon Bundy has been making comments through, through his attorney, right? That's right. Uh, Ammon Bundy making comments through his attorney, uh, telling people in his own words uh, for people to go home, go home. We have a thing on this screen, if you're not watching the video version, that has occupiers arrested. And there's uh, at least eight of them here that have been arrested. And the prevailing theory now is that the guy who's in jail, right, he got arrested. His lawyer's like, dude, what the heck? You're making the federal government mad? Your best bet is to be super nice and say, we're really sorry, uh, tell everyone to go home. So he's doing that. <laughs> but he's probably going to jail for a long... ...home and hug their families. Uh, again, uh, we're not seeing any movement uh, there at the refuge of people uh, even wanting to leave. It seems like uh, they are hell-bent on staying there for a long time. Uh, one thing we should also note, Anderson, is that the federal... Well, at this point, say you're up in their thing, right? Uh, your choices are go home a.k.a. go home, meaning the police come arrest you, right? Because they're all getting arrested. Or you just stay there and you wait out getting arrested. Um, right? This could get bad. Uh, meaning they're like, we don't want to go to jail, and they're coming to take us to jail, and we have guns and dildos and lube. Complaint uh, was unsealed today, and and something in there was particularly interesting. It said that authorities had reason to believe that the occupiers had explosives and night vision goggles. That is the first time we've heard that, but we should point out that we don't know if officials actually verify the presence of explosives. And do we Anderson? know how many of them are left at the wildlife refuge that they uh, that they took over? It's really un unclear at this point. Uh, it looks like. Uh, there's less than 10, maybe somewhere between 5 and 10. Um, clear okay, well, that's interesting. Uh, let's watch a video on the traffic stop and see what, if there's any information here. And a member of the armed militia group occupying federal land in Harney County says they're not leaving until their demands are met. And that after one militia member was killed as several others were arrested yesterday. K2's Joe Douglas is live at the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. Joe, you've been up all night talking to occupiers. What is their plan? Well, their plan is to stay put. They say they want a peaceful resolution, but they're not sure they believe the government wants the same. The occupiers have blocked the road just outside the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge with a front loader. On our way out here, we saw multiple Oregon State Police vehicles racing by, including a large armored truck. The FBI has just announced a containment procedure establishing checkpoints around us. Now, late yesterday afternoon on Highway 395 north of Burns, law enforcement say they pulled over two vehicles. Authorities say everyone obeyed orders to surrender except for two, Lavoy Finicum and Ryan Bundy. Militia leader... An Are you kidding me? That was not real. Lavoy I'm sorry, Finnecum we can't make Ryan fun Bundy. of people's, uh, we can't make fun of people's disabilities, but this guy is, uh... Wow. Okay. He has a facial, uh, deformation that makes him very hillbilly. Militia leader... An Ammon Bundy's brother. Sources say Ryan Bundy was hurt and Lavoy Finnick. Okay, well, that's boring. Um, the chat says there might be a shootout. <laughs> yeah, there might be. The only way that there wouldn't be a shootout, I think, is if the government says, okay, we're really sorry. You guys are all allowed to leave and go home and we won't prosecute you. We pinky promise. 
Uh, but I don't know what the I don't know what the government form of pinky promise is, <laughs> because you're uh, like the police can say anything. They can be like, oh, yeah, we'll give you a million bucks if you come turn yourself in, and they arrest you, and you're like, where's the million bucks? And they're like, that was just a joke. We're the police. We can do anything. Um, so I don't know. Well, I don't know how they would do that. You have to be able to promise them something. Un- Is it possible that you can get a contract that says we promise immunity? I don't even know if that's a thing. It should be, obviously. So that is the Oregon uh, mich- mi- uh, Oregon <laughs> Oregon militia standoff. Um, and it is going to get bad, folks. So keep your eyes on that dial. Um, and by dial, I mean CNN.com, the only true news source that we have. Blizzard of 2000, um, <laughs> Blizzard of 2016 hit us here. Uh, and it didn't hit us here is what I mean. It missed completely, which is so good. It hit Boston, D.C., Maryland uh, with like two feet of snow, right? And New York, and didn't hit anything here, which is great. The only downside is I can't watch the neighbors get stuck in their driveway, and I've said that before, but whatever. It's a okay enough trade off because this snow is killing people. Five snow shoveling deaths in New York. <laughs> Authorities say five people died in New York on Saturday while trying to shovel the snow that was falling all day. All of the victims apparently suffered heart attacks. Governor Cuomo made the announcement on Sunday during the storm recovery update. Three snow shoveling deaths were have reported to have taken place in New York City on Saturday. Three? I just said five. Uh, and then I just said three. <laughs> Unless it was New York City versus the state. One of the deaths took place in Staten Island. The other two happened in Queens. The names of the victims are not released. Why, do, why is it that people get... Um, Heart attacks while snow shoveling. Let's Google this. Why do do people get heart attacks snow shoveling? Cold weather, snow shoveling, and your risk for heart attack. <clears throat> Some activities, such as snow shoveling, walking through heavy wet snow, or in a, in a snow drift... Or in a snowdrift, downhill and cross-country skiing, snowboarding can strain the heart enough to cause a heart attack. Snow shoveling can be more strenuous than exercising full throttle on a treadmill. Not if not <laughs> the way I do a treadmill. While this may not be a problem, if an individual is healthy and fit, it can be dangerous if not. Man, I saw a guy yesterday almost as fast as me on the treadmill again. Uh, this is starting to get scary. I had to stay extra time just to make sure that he wasn't going to break my record or whatever. Individuals who are at risk of a heart attack during cold out uh, during cold outdoor activities include those with prior heart attacks, those with known heart disease, those with high blood pressure, smokers, those who lead a sedentary lifestyle. Sedentary lifestyle. Uh, if you lead a sedentary lifestyle, does it mean you have sediment all over you? Oh, I'm covered in sediment and sawdust <laughs> and Pieces of, like, broken rocks. Ugh. I'm a sedimentary lifestyle. <laughs> I'm just a bunch of sediment all rolled into one. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, yeah. If you guys want to check out uh, Bundy Erotic Fanfic, check out the hashtag Bundy Erotic Fanfic. Did you bring condoms? Jed whispered. Not to worry. We're protected by the First and Second Amendment, Eamon replied. It's just one example of uh, the Bundy fanfic. Uh, I don't need that link. Okay. Here's some news. Dear Nicholas, primary account holder, we have been notified that copyright content may have been shared using your internet connection without permission of the copyright owner. What was allegedly shared and when? File name. Better Call Saul, Season 1, Episode 8. Uh, did you provide my personal information to the copyright owner? We have not shared any of your personal information with the copyright owner in connection with the notice that we received. 
Rather, the copyright owner or its representative simply provided us with an IP address associated with your account, and we sent this alert to you. All right, so what do you need to do? If you have been sharing content illegally using your internet connection, please stop doing so immediately. Make sure that everyone who uses your internet connection knows that you received this alert and advise them not to make any illegal use of music, television, or movie content. For information regarding authorized sources of music, blah, blah, blah. secure your home wireless so that nobody can use it. Be aware of the dangers associated with peer-to-peer -peer networks. Peer-to-peer -peer programs can pose dangers to your computer and other devices. And to our network, risks can include mistakenly downloading malware, pornography, or copyrighted material. What if this continues to happen? Using your account to share content without the copyright owners is a violation of U.S. copyright law and of our acceptable use standard. And under the copyright alert system, further instances of suspicious activity involving your account may result in the undertaking measures that will temporarily affect your internet connection. A uh, range of actions may include redirection to a landing page for a period of time until you contact Time Warner. Wow! So I'd go online and it'd be like, um, you're going to have to call us and talk to one of our spanking officials <laughs> where we hit you for having allegedly shared copyright information. So I've allegedly shared copyrighted information by accident. Allegedly. Uh, <coughs> okay, what do we have to do here? Da, 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 da. Donald Trump, in feud with Fox News, shuns the debate. Donald J. Trump and Fox News, the candidate who has reordered the Republican presidential race and the <laughs> stared each other down on Tuesday. His demand that Megan Kelly, the Fox News anchor, be dumped from moderating Thursday's debate, the last before Monday's caucuses. The network did not blink, so Mr. Trump walked. Mr. Trump's announcement here is that he would probably or would most likely or is pretty close or to irrevocably planning to skip irrevocably planning to skip the debate. Um, creating a gaping uncertainty in the center of the Republican nominating contest just as it was formally about to begin in Iowa. So, Donald Trump may be skipping the debate. Let's check out the latest news on this. What Donald Trump will be doing instead of the Fox News debate. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump found himself in an unfamiliar place on Wednesday night, a packed barn in Gilbert, <laughs> South Carolina, a rural town in Lexington. Little. Behind him, strategically placed collard greens and red bell peppers freshly picked in a nearby farm. The ceiling was laced with Christmas lights. Um, I don't know what the heck he's doing. Okay, Trump announced before this, that he would hold an event Thursday evening at Drake University at the same time as the Fox News debate. There, um, all of his re fellow Republican presidential candidates will be duking it out, with Trump likely the target of many conversations with or without him there. Trump's campaign said the event will benefit still unnamed veterans groups. <laughs> so, Donald Trump deciding, you know what, I'm not going to do your stupid debate. So he's not going to go, he's saying... We still don't know. That's tonight, actually. We'll find out. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to have another event at the exact same time. People can come to that one, and you can televise that one. So now the news media's got to split up, or they got to send twice as many people to Iowa. Um, Is it in Iowa? Well, anyway, it might not be in Iowa. <laughs> they have to send twice as many people to wherever this debate is happening, and then they got to go to Trump's event, and Trump is saying, you know, my event, that's to benefit the troops. So now he's turning into a real Republican, like... Troop, 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 <laughs> troop, 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 troop. Uh, okay, so Donald Trump skipping the debate. As many of you already know, I'm very close to the situation. It's very hard to talk right now. In a press conference Tuesday afternoon, officials can barely hold back the tears as they explain the tragic accident that happened right as school was letting out. The victim, who is a, an adult, was pronounced DOA on scene. The victim, Yikes. Susan George. Wow, how rude. Um, she's DOA. Jordan. She was the principal at Amy Beverland Elementary School. A beloved educator, she was walking students outside to the buses when she was hit and killed. We cannot uh, 
express uh, deeply enough uh, the sympathy and condolence that all of the city of Indianapolis uh, feels not only for the family of Susan Jordan, uh, but for those children who were affected by today's uh, accident. Police describing the situation as a freak accident. They say the bus was in a line with other buses waiting to pick up students. It somehow jumped a curb before hitting Jordan and two 10 year olds. We will continue to be on scene throughout the rest of this evening with critical response. Per okay, um, let's uh, get a better news source for that. I'm going to do two seconds. Bus driver, principal pushed students to safety before dying in crash. A beloved school principal died and two children were seriously injured when a school bus jumped a curb at Amy Beverland Elementary School on the far northeast side of Indianapolis Tuesday afternoon. Two 10-year-olds were seriously injured and taken to Riley Hospital for Children. Um, an Indianapolis Fire Department spokesman said they remain in serious condition late Tuesday night. Officials said Principal Susan Jordan died after being hit by the bus. The bus driver told investigators Jordan pushed several students to safety moments before the crash. That's just the type of person she was. Um, so apparently she's standing on the side of the road with all the buses. Stupid bus driver decides to uh, <laughs> stupid bus driver decides to hit the gas pedal. People are saying, "Oh, the bus somehow jumped the curb." No. The female bus driver who has not been identified told firefighters she's not sure why the bus accelerated and jumped the curb. Uh, the driver and 25 students on board were not injured. We lost a great educator today, Smith said of Jordan. Quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about a legend of education. So it is very sad. She was standing there. Bus uh, accelerates, jumps the curb, and uh, hits her and a bunch of kids. kind and caring she truly cares about all of the staff and all of the kids wait no and i'm sure i real. have never had and will have a boss who's as supportive as she is well that was a tribute video made for principal susan jordan this past summer the amy beverlin elementary school community today is mourning the loss of that very leader it is a difficult day jordan was killed when a school bus jumped the curb okay so they're trying to talk they're trying to talk the news is trying to m talk but also in the background, play this tribute video of people who are saying like nice things about her. It's very confusing to listen to. And hit Jordan and also two 10 year old students. The good news is those students are expected to make a full recovery. But again, today's very difficult. The entire district is closed in Susan Jordan's honor. Fox 59's Kendall Downing has been in Lawrence Township all day. He's finding out much more about the investigation, where it stands, and the legacy of Principal Susan Jordan. Yeah. I don't care about this principal. I want to know about the bus driver that hit her. Let's do the investigation. In Indianapolis with more. Kendall. Well, State investigators say they did not find anything mechanically wrong with that bus involved in... Ha! <laughs> Got it. Case closed yesterday's crash. A news conference just wrapped up here at the district headquarters moments ago. A very emotional news conference in which colleagues shared their memories and thoughts of Susan Jordan. And she was just the most amazing boss. <sighs> Bus 244 had previously been inspected and approved with no issues on January 22nd. That's just four days before the event. Veteran educator Susan Jordan was killed when the bus that had been stopped somehow lurched forward and jumped a curb during dismissal time. You know how it somehow jumps a curb? Because we hired these old ladies to drive the buses. Oh, I don't know what happened. I just ran over a, uh, just ran over a student and a, a teacher. All you have to do to find out is just go to YouTube and go, uh, bus crash and just uh, watch uh, just watch some videos of buses crashing <laughs> onboard school bus crash video oh we gotta skip ahead to this oh is it over it's very it's a silent film Oh, did they get rear-ended? That's not funny. I wanted to see the old lady hit something. <laughs> 
onboard video from the front of a bus. Uh, um, okay. Okay, well, uh, if you want to have some fun, head on over to YouTube and do a uh, bus video, bus crash video. I remember seeing one on the inside of a bus. It was like a city bus. And uh, <laughs> the driver's going, and then all you see is the driver and, like, one passenger. And the driver's going, and then all of a sudden she's like, ah! <laughs> uh, her face goes crazy, and she jumps a curb and then goes, like, into a ditch or something. And uh, you can see the driver. He sees it coming. So he's like, oh, no. And he decides that the smartest thing for him to do is, like, lay on the floor of the bus. Uh, right? <laughs> so they crash. Everyone's fine. And then he gets up, and he walks to the front of the bus like he wants to get off. He's just like, please just let me off. You crashed the bus. I'm out of here. <laughs> he wasn't even like, are you okay? What happened? Oh, I'm so sorry. He's, he's like, pissed. <laughs> um, Yeah, well, I don't have time to pull up some crash videos. But anyway, old lady driving a bus, crashed it into a principal. That's cool. Now she becomes the new principal. It's like the Santa Claus. Hmm? <laughs> right? If you kill the principal, you become the principal. Next topic. Mm, Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. A Milwaukee convenience store now doing its part to help out the people of Flint, Michigan. Yeah, the store workers are asking for your help as well with this. The convenient goodies store there near Applin and Feebrands is holding a bottled water collection drive. Donations have been pouring in since this past Saturday. Of course, the city of Flint in the middle of that water crisis after contamination in the drinking water. The donations are expected to leave Milwaukee for Flint tomorrow. We're going to go. Do this has been in the news all over the place. The Flint water crisis. Um, so what happened was Flint built its, okay, well, we can't read this whole thing, but essentially, uh, in January, 2015, a public January 2015, a year ago, a public meeting was held where citizens complained about bad water. Residents complained about the taste, smell, and appearance of the water for 18 months before a Flint physician found highly elevated blood lead levels. In the Children of Flint, <laughs> where the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality insisted the water was safe to drink, it was determined that the river water, which due to higher chloride concentration, was more corrosive than the lake water. Um, it was leaching lead from aging pipes. <laughs> While the local outcry about Flint water quality was growing in early 2015, Flint water officials filed papers with state regulators purporting to show that the tests at Flint water treatment plant had detected no lead. Uh, and testing in homes had registered lead at acceptable levels. The documents falsely claim that the city had tested tap water from homes with lead service lines uh, and therefore the highest lead poisoning risks. In reality, the city does not know the locations of lead service lines, <laughs> which city officials acknowledged in November 2015. Ooh, that's not good. Um... A report uh, reported that the city had disregarded federal rules requiring it to seek out homes with lead plumbing for testing, potentially leading the city and state to underestimate for months the extent of toxic lead leaching into Flint's tap water. So basically, if you live in Flint, Michigan, you have no usable water. Um, you have to drink bottled water and you have to, I guess, bathe in lead and you have to hold your breath the entire time. We're the door and pass out the water ourselves. So, so far, so good, but we're still trying to get as much water as possible. I want to help at least 200 households. The store says it'll donate whatever people want to drop off, and that includes things like hand sanitizer and cleaning products as well. Well, Flint's water crisis has people really coast to coast questioning the safety of their own water supply. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett says Milwaukee's water is safe, and the city is now taking some extra precaution for the time being. Our Rachel Valian sat down with him today. She joins us live now from City Hall. And good evening. The Milwaukee mayor tells us the city's got safe, clean water. It can be... Okay, I do not care. Um, so do not go to Flint. There is lead all over the place. If you have a kid and it lives in Flint, it's going to be lead in a second. <laughs> so it's going to be the tin man. Tin's the same as lead, right? Oh, boy, this show's going horribly. Um, let's check out this uh, this story. Oh, crap. That wasn't what I wanted. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna do another Google search here. Do shine. 
new fad among teens. Teens die after drinking Dew Shine, a mix of racing fuel and Mountain Dew. Nashville, Tennessee, a poison control official says two Tennessee teens are dead after drinking a mixture of racing fuel and Mountain Dew. Well, A, what is racing fuel? Is that different than normal fuel? I mean, I know it can be different than normal fuel, but what is, like, any, a whole bunch of different things could be, like, racing fuel. Are we jet racing? Are we car racing? Are we 4x4 four four racing? And by 4x4, four four, I mean one of those uh, ATVs. <coughs> Tennis, uh, uh, says the teens evidently thought they could drink methanol. Oh, I'm dumb. I should have just ca- kept reading. Uh-huh. <laughs> so they're calling it racing fuel. Uh, Poison Control Center medical director says the teens evidently thought they could drink methanol, which is extremely con- uh, toxic as a substitute for ethanol, the ingredient in alcoholic beverages. So they decided to drink. It's basically a form of alcohol, but it's not. <laughs> it's not rubbing alcohol. That's isopropyl alcohol. Uh, it's not drinking alcohol, which is ethanol, and it's uh, so it's racing fuel ethanol called methanol. The ingredient in alcoholic beverages that causes intoxication. Seeger says the Robertson County teens didn't realize that drinking methanol could kill them, and she called last week's poisonings an accident. She says that it's the first time she has seen this type of poisoning. The four cases are the only ones reported in Tennessee, and Seeger is not aware of any cases in other states. So, okay, I was wrong. It's probably not a new teen fad <laughs> to drink methanol and Mountain Dew and call it Dew Shine. Um... Oh, no, maybe it is called Dew Shine, but maybe you're supposed to drink it with the straight up stuff. And they're like, you know what? We're all out of the straight up stuff. Just, uh, you know, I put this in my go kart. It smells like alcohol, feels like alcohol. Let's just drink that. It'll be fine. How bad could it be? It's alcohol, right? I mean, it may taste a little weird. Then they do that, uh, and then they are doomed. <laughs> Washington boy suffers brain brain bleed after attempting the duct tape challenge. What is the duct tape challenge? Well, let's find out. Uh, a Washington teenager is in the hospital af- recovering after being wrapped tightly in duct tape <laughs> and trying to break himself free of the bond. Um, let's uh, check out the warnings of duct tape a challenge. A dangerous challenge trending online almost cost this local teen his life. The 14-year-old has bleeding on his brain but is alive after trying the so-called duct tape challenge. Tom Yaswinski is at Seattle Children's Hospital tonight with the warning parents and kids need to hear. Tom. Yeah, the duct tape challenge. <laughs> <laughs> he just has duct tape. Hey, Tom, hold this roll of duct tape and then when we will cut to you, peel a piece off. It'll look really cool. <laughs> um... I love the I love the news. It's like the most dangerous thing your teen needs needs to know about. It's Ebola, um, and AIDS and anthrax and the choking game and other things. By the way, I heard the choking game really does feel like amazing. Like you get choked, uh, and then it's like the best feeling ever. It must be right because if you're, let's get let's get serious for a second. All these people keep dying. While um, choking themselves and doing a thing with their hand on uh, their private parts, right? It must feel amazing. Otherwise, you wouldn't risk dying for it all, every time you do it. It must be the best thing ever. Um, so, I don't know. It seems stupid when you think about, like, why would I want to choke myself and be deprived of oxygen um, and not be able to breathe? And th- But then you're like, well... If they're doing it, it must be so good. Kind of like smoking. Like, you're ruining your lungs, and you're going to have a heart attack from shoveling pretty soon. Remember that story earlier? Smokers will have heart attacks from shoveling guaranteed 100%. Um, But they keep doing it, so it must be good. I don't know. All right, let's go back to Tom with a piece of duct tape. i got to watch this again. This is going to be hilarious. Tape challenge. Tom Yaswinski is at Seattle Children's Hospital tonight with the warning parents and kids need to hear. Tom. Yeah, the duct tape challenge could have cost a teen his life. I'm not even 100% sure that's duct tape. I think they might have just grabbed a roll of gaffer tape out of the back of the news van and been like, close enough, they can't tell the difference. It does not look like duct tape to me. 
life if his friends didn't call 911 immediately. I don't know what I would do if I lost him. I mean, because they told me over and over that he could have. He's lucky to be alive. Yikes. Okay. This hippo is also lucky to be alive. She needs some duct tape to hold her skin up or something. I don't know what I'm saying. Sarah Fish says her son was an inch from death after he fell and hit his head during a potentially deadly game with his friends. My son and his friends uh, were doing what they call a duct tape challenge. Oh, that is loud as heck. Um, so, okay, now we gotta, we've got cut over to a video that seems to be from the internet of someone else doing the duct tape challenge. So let's uh, watch this teenage uh, girl do the duct tape challenge. It's going to be sexy. A quick search online shows dozens of videos of teens doing it. One friend wraps another in duct tape and sets a timer to see how long it takes to break out. Last week, 14-year-old Skylar Fish tried the challenge with friends, but he lost his balance and hit his head on a concrete and metal window frame, shattering his eye socket and cheekbone, causing bleeding on his brain that needed immediate surgery. Um, okay, so this is pretty stupid. Um... Let's head on over to YouTube. I'm gonna check out, see if we can find some duct tape challenge videos. The crew, it's Wednesday. I'm feeling a little bit better, not quite there. And I saw a new challenge that was on the internet that piqued my interest, and it's called the duct tape challenge. From my understanding, you duct tape your friend to a chair, and they have to get out of it. And then your friend does it to you. I'm not sure how anybody wins in that situation, but that's the challenge. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead and see if he does the duct tape challenge. That is hair. You know what else? For you will for sure not be able. Nope. That was not a good, uh, that was not a good game. Okay, here's another one. One year ago, the duct tape challenge. Let's see how long this video is. We're not going to, we're not going to commit to a long video here, guys. Okay, what is up, everybody? Today, we're going to be doing the duct tape challenge can you imagine what the duct tape challenge is going to be i'm going to duct tape her ass up and then she's going to duct tape my ass up so yes let's get into it okay this guy has 3.8 million views but he has a lot of subscribers already i think he's already a youtube person so we are going to jump ahead to the duct tape uh duct taping i want to see this girl duct taped up hello dizzy. <laughs> she is getting duct taped She's around an office chair. She is duct taped with this green duct tape. Okay. I'm going to skip ahead. Uh, we're going to see if she can break out of the duct tape. And. Okay. This seems fun. This seems pretty fun. It's kind of like. Um, we're going to tie you up. We're going to pretend you're a hostage. And then you try to get out and see how hard it is. Okay. I can see how that's fun, right? <laughs> it's like role playing. <laughs> I think I'm crowning. <laughs> crowning time commences. One minute in left. Oh, this is a good point. Her wrists are really tied up, though. I think that might be cutting off the circulation. That could be dangerous. Okay, well, that's the duct tape challenge. Tie your friend up to a chair and uh, see what happens. And then hopefully he doesn't fall over and hit his head on a windowsill. Because apparently that's what happened. It's not like the duct tape killed him. He was just being an idiot and he fell over and hit his head on a windowsill. They uh, did the best to fix everything, but his nerves and his eyes were pinched off. Um, so he can't see out of his eye. The damage to his eyesight might be permanent. And he will also have to relearn normal everyday tasks. If I think he had to relearn normal everyday tasks anyway, if he's getting duct taped to a chair. If he would have hit it on a differently, uh, like an inch over. Okay, Dr. Mom, thank goodness. Oh, man, if it had been one inch over, he would have died. Okay, here, let's take the bet. If he had hit one inch over, he would have died, or it would have been completely fine, right? What do you think she's going to say? I'm saying, I'm betting on she's going to say he would have died. <laughs> if it had hit one inch over, it would have been completely fine. Nothing would have happened. Let's find out. He could have died. I won. If uh, his friend didn't flip him over when he was having a seizure and choking up blood, he could have died. Okay, yeah. If he's choking up blood and his friend didn't call the police, 
Could have died. All right, here's another video of the duct tape challenge from online. Oh! <coughs> now, Skyler oh. and his mom want to warn parents and teens about the dangers of this challenge and other similar challenges kids see and often try. They're just looking at what's fun, what's cool, what's going to impress their friends. Oh, I can break out of this duct tape. I yeah, you're dumb. Okay, that's not as, that's not any more dangerous than anything else they could be doing. I bet you five people got brain hemorrhages from skateboarding yesterday. Uh, and one person does it from getting duct tape to a chair. Big whoop. Duct tape yourself to chairs. Send the video in. We'll put it on the show. Okay. Uh, the chat is active with one guy. <laughs> I would have boot. Uh, I would have boozed that. <laughs> LOL, Nick. Funny as heck. Thank you. Clean your room, Nick. LOL, haha. Yes. My background on the video version of the show, if you want to check it out, is just my corner. Um, that is, I mean, it's actually a shelf of clothes, and there's just a couple other things piled on top of it. Big whoop. I have nowhere to store stuff, so I throw it on top of that shelf. Okay. Okay. We are now going into the lightning round. We're going to finish off with the last 10 minutes of the show in the lightning round. This is the part of the show where we just click through all of the things real quick. Uh, let me make sure that there was nothing else in my open stuff. Drinking Mountain Dew. The principal. Okay. Hopefully, videos don't start playing. <laughs> Starting off the lightning round. No charges for LAPD officers who shot newspaper delivery women during the Chris Dorner manhunt. Eight Los Angeles police officers who mistakenly opened fire on Los Angeles Times newspaper delivery women thinking they were rogue <laughs> ex-cop Chris Dorner. <laughs> oh. Get him. It's Chris Dorner new delivering the newspapers. <laughs> Disguised as a woman. Will not be criminally charged. The officers opened fire in the pre-dawn hours of February 7th, 2013 as Margie Carranza and her mother, Emma Hernandez, were slowly cruising through a tourist neighborhood in the pickup truck delivering papers. Law enforcement officers around the region were on edge during the massive manhunt for Dorner the ex-LAPD officer who sought vengeance against police officers he blamed for his firing. Um, LAPD officers were in the area protecting a captain believed to be one of the targets. The officers thought the woman's truck matched the description of Dorner's vehicle. Hernandez's vehicle was shot. Hernandez was shot twice, uh, and the other lady suffered cuts to her hand, likely from broken glass. Both women survived and received $4. million in legal settlement from the city. So that's okay, I suppose. I mean, no charges for the cops. Because <laughs> they're like, well, they had reason to believe that it was Dorner, Dorner's truck. So if you think you see Dorner's truck and you shoot it at, um, no charges, I guess. But $4.2 to get shot a couple times, not so bad of a trade. I mean, you can never say, you know, i take $4.2 million to get shot a couple times. Um it's not the same trade-off because if you t if you signed that agreement and then you got shot, you're like, okay, it's okay, it hurts so bad, I'm about to get four point two million dollars. That's how like mentally I'll get through, right? If you just get shot out of the blue, you can't. You're not in the same mental state to say, oh man, I'll probably get a great lawsuit out of this, uh, and someone's got to deliver the rest of these newspapers. Huh? <laughs> Milwaukee man arrested after allegedly uh, plotting mass shooting to terrify the world. Sami Muhammad Hamzai, 23, had a plan. Kill more than two dozen people at a Masonic temple in Milwaukee and become an international extremist superstar. I'm telling you, if this hit is executed, it will be known all over the world. Hamza told two unidentified FBI sources uh, in Arabic. In Arabic? We have FBI sources that are, uh, speak Arabic? That's weird. Actually, that probably makes a lot of sense, right? Pretty much half the FBI should probably be uh, Muslims. All over the world, all the Muhajin, Muhajin will be talking and they will be proud of us. We are marching at the front of this war. The larger the number of victims, the better, Hamza said, according to the Justice Department. 30 is excellent, he said. If I got out after killing 30 people, I will be happy 100%. 100% happy, because those 30 will terrify the world. Uh, what does he mean by got out? 
like uh, suicided? Or does he mean like he got out, like Aaron Roof got out? Uh, now, Hamze's alleged plans have been derailed, and he was arrested Tuesday and charged with possess- possessing mis- machine guns and a silencer. Uh, he devised a detailed plan to commit a mass murder intended to kill dozens of people, acting U.S. attorney said. He also said that he wanted this mass shooting to be known the world over and to ignite broader clashes. Um, according to the criminal complaint, Hamza has been under investigation since September 2015. The investigation revealed that in October 2015, Hamza planned to travel to Jordan, enter the West Bank, and conduct an attack on Israeli soldiers and citizens living in the West Bank. Hamza later abandoned those plans and began to focus on conducting an attack in the United States. According to the criminal complaint, Hamza has engaged in extensive conversations with two confidential sources. Uh, these conversations, which were in Arabic, were monitored, recorded, and translated by the FBI beginning in October 2015. During these recorded conversations, Hamza explained that he wanted to commit a domestic act of violence, and earlier this month, he settled on a Masonic temple in Milwaukee as his target. On January 19th, Hamza, Secret uh, Person 1 and Secret Person 2, took a guided tour of the Masonic temple, during which they learned meeting schedules and where people will be located during meetings. Wow, he scheduled, he scheduled like a, you know, I'm really interested in what you do around here. Can I uh, come look at it? In recorded conversation after they left the temple, so these uh, Secret Service agents were wearing a chest recorder, Hamza discussed his plans with uh, Secret Person 1 and Secret Person 2. In that conversation, he reaffirmed his intention to commit an armed attack on the temple and discussed in further detail how they would carry out the a- how he would carry out the attack. So he's talking to the secret agents. We're thinking they're I'm thinking they're secret agents, right? Maybe they're Maybe they don't work for the FBI, but they're like Muslim plants or something. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> they're like, can you please explain uh, in detail how you would like to kill everyone? Go and please speak directly into my chest. Now. <laughs> uh, he explained to them that when they executed the attack at the temple, one of the three of them would have to stay at the main door while the others went upstairs to kill people who would be meeting there. One of us will stay at the door at the entrance and lock the door down. He will be at the main door down. He will. I feel like he's repeating himself. Two will get <laughs> to the lift up. I think uh, it's a translation issue here between that Muslim and this uh, American speak. Two will get to the lift up. They will enter the room and spray everyone in the room. <laughs> spray everyone with silly string. <laughs> the one who is sti- I thought that's what you meant. <laughs> the one who is standing downstairs will spray anyone he finds. We will shoot them, kill them, and get out. We will walk and walk. After a while, we will be covered as if it is cold. And we'll take the covers off and dump them. Okay, so we'll be wearing a coat is basically what he's saying. So we'll be wearing heavy coats. (laughs) We'll be covered as if it were cold. What a weird translation. And we'll take the covers off, meaning the coats, and dump them in a corner and keep on walking as if nothing happened, as if everything is normal. But one has to stand on the door because if no one stood on the door, people will be going in and out. And if people came in from outside and found out what was going on, everything is busted. My goodness. There's a lot of translation here to go through. This is not very good for a lightning round, is it? I'm telling you, as I was saying, all three of us get in together. One will go to the one that is staying at the reception. If he was alone, it is okay. If there were two of them, shoot both of them. Do not let the blood show. Shoot her from the bottom. Ooh, what? Shoot her from the bottom? Two or three shots in her stomach and let her sit on the chairs and push her to the front as if she is sleeping. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow, okay, so they had a whole uh, plan here. So I'm not going to be able to go through all this. Seems like he really had his shootings in order. If you just cover yourself up like you're cold, you uh, get away with it. Authorities up the reward to $50,000 for information about escaped Orange County jail inmates. Sheriff's deputies are still searching for three inmates after it was discovered on Friday night. Friday (laughs) night. That they had escaped the Orange County Central Men's Jail in Santa Ana. At a news conference on Sunday afternoon, he said that investigators were exhausting every lead and hoped members of the public would come forward with information to help apprehend the escaped men. The escape is believed to have taken place shortly after 5 a.m. Inmate count 
uh, for shortly after a 5 a.m. inmate count on Friday. Uh, Halleck said investigators believe the inmates moved through plumbing tunnels and ultimately ended up on the roof uh, in an unsecured area where they were a- then able to rappel down to the ground using a makeshift rope made out of sheets. They just f- and then they just fled on foot. Just tie our sheets together, just like in a cartoon. Let's do it. Three inmates were last confirmed in prison during the 5 a.m. count, and disturbance in the jail delayed an 8 p.m. count. Uh, so f- between 5 a.m. and 8 p.m., there were no counts. And then at 9 p.m., authorities discovered that the inmates were not accounted for. So they don't count them very often in this one. And these were not, like, uh, low levels. These are in for, let's see, kidnapping, torture, murder, and attempted murder. All right, uh what those three guys are in for. Last story, we're going to pick up at a uh, relatively good... So be on the lookout if you're in Orange County for three men that are uh, murdering and torturing. Motorists on a Pennsylvania turnpike banded together and formed a human chain to rescue a truck driver whose semi was about to go over an embankment. So here's a picture from the video version. Uh, there's a semi truck. It has crashed off the snowy road, and it's teetering on the edge of a cliff. Oh no! Uh, er- Arlen Sanek, a trucker who witnessed the incident Friday, said the truck in front of him was clearly having difficulty on the snow-covered road, and it soon began smoking and shooting off debris. What? Oh, there's so much snow that I'm starting to smoke. At that point, I was on my brakes and everything I had and hoping I didn't lose control. I saw the truck out in front of me pretty much finishing his wipeout and cutting off the entire two lanes of traffic and angling down over the cliff. He said the driver appeared to be trapped in the cab of the vehicle as it teetered on the edge. <laughs> Yikes. I'm sitting there in a daze and I realize people are running to the truck. Said He said the motorist didn't appear to be concerned for their own safety. It's like everyone knew in that moment they have to reach him. Let's lock into this and get this guy up. It was awesome. So they formed a human shield. He said the rescue has formed a human shield. I don't think that's the term you mean. Human chain? Human shield to reach the driver and pull him to safety. To me, it looked like a spontaneous, instinctive thing that everyone just started hooking their arms together. It was absolutely amazing. He said the truck driver was back on his feet after just a few minutes. Let's look at this video. Is there a video of it? Or is it just... a ton of strangers who pulled over to help during this rescue let's just jump ahead the snow was falling fast nope there's no video it's just a picture it's the still the still so this guy who was a uh, witnessing was like oh you know what i can help or this would great a great picture so takes a picture of the human chain that they pulled the truck to safety all right folks that is the end of news with nick it is now approaching 7 a.m i need to be getting in the shower getting in the Get in the mood to do work at a job. Just kidding. I don't do work. Remember, I'm in cruise control in life. All right. Thanks for heading out to News with Nick. And uh, if you want to see the video version of the show, head on over to your PCL account and log in and uh, go to that post related to this show. And thank you. Any chatter that showed up, he is very, the chatter is very excited for the Super Bowl. Uh, where the Denver Broncos will be playing the Carolina Panthers. He th- uh, and Peyton Manning, most likely, prob- maybe, possibly, his last game um, in the NFL, if you follow that sort of thing. It's a pretty big deal. But, I don't know, maybe we'll have some pulled pork over at my he- house and watch the watch the game on the streaming computer. Hmm. All right. That is it. Uh, Let's see if I have any closing music for News with Nick. I most likely do not. So this is it. News with Nick. Boop, 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 boop. Thanks for coming out. Hopefully there's another show before 2017.